How do you turn your outline into a persuasive letter? In this lesson, you will draft the body of a persuasive letter by arguing claims and refuting counterclaims. So let's review. We've been working on this prompt. Using evidence from Moyer's article, write a letter to a housing developer convincing him or her to save the burrowing owl's habitat. Make sure that you support your claims with arguments and evidence from the text. So we did a close reading and analysis of the little owls that live underground. We were then given this assignment to write a persuasive letter to the developer. We then um, generated and planned um, both a brainstorm and an outline. And last time we began the drafting and revising phase by writing our introduction. Today we're going to continue that by drafting our body. We are working towards a place where we have a final draft to both edit and publish. So last time we wrote a persuasive letter introduction. Um, that had a hook, it built a bridge, and then it previewed our argument. And so we're actually going to write out that argument using our persuasive letter outline. So we've already done um, Roman numeral one on the introduction, and today we're going to work through two through four, these body paragraphs. In order to do that, we're going to follow three steps. First, you need to draft your argument using text-based support. Second, you're going to strengthen your draft by addressing the counterclaim, counter argument. And third, you're going to sum up your paragraph by asserting your evidence supported conclusion. Let's take a look. So first you're going to draft your argument using text based support. So here is just that that chunk of my outline. And what I'm going to do is start with the introduction and by elaborating on that. So we need to talk about owls being widely endangered and get into the nitty gritty specifics of this being an international issue that's made worse by the conflicting interests of developer, developers and conservationists. So here I go. Burrowing owls are an endangered or imperiled species in the vast majority of North America. Burrowing owls once lived all over North America but are now a threatened species in Mexico, endangered in Canada, and listed as a species of conservation concern in the United States. In recent years, burrowing owls have been driven out of their native habitats by projects like yours and are subsequently living in non-native and hostile habitats, right? I've introduced the problem, that they're widely endangered, and I've elaborated on that by giving a lot of evidence to support the idea this is a real problem. The next thing I need to do is strengthen your draft by addressing the counter argument, right? We want to make sure that if the developer is saying, but what about, that we've already addressed it, that we are fully persuading our audience of our point. So we're going to work through this counterclaim, but the developer might say, it's just a population relocation. This is not my problem. They're still abundant. So we need to address that because we saw in the article that that's not the case, that they're actually endangered. So that might look like this. Well, some developers and even a few outlying scientists try to claim that there is just a population shift, not a decline. There is simply not evidence to support this. The scientific community overwhelmingly reports not just startling shifts in locality, but a significant decline in population. So now I've addressed the counterclaim. So if anyone says like, hey, but wait, there's moving, I've said no, that's not the case. The scientific community says this is a problem, they are endangered. So now I need to, you need to sum up your paragraph by asserting your evidence supported conclusion. So going back to my outline, I'm down here at conclude. I want to get my conclusion that the overall population decline is due to overdevelopment. Um, so here's how I'm going to jot that out. Due to overdevelopment, owls are being pushed out and their overall population diminished. But this does not have to be the case, right? So I've I said, do, my conclusion is overdevelopment has caused them to be pushed out and their population to go down. And then I continue to hook my reader by saying this doesn't have to be the case. So 
Um, here's my persuasive body paragraph, um, and here it is all written out. Burrowing owls are an endangered or imperiled species in the vast majority of North America. Burrowing owls once lived all over North America, but now are a threatened species in Mexico, endangered in Canada, and listed as a bird species of conservation concern in the United States. In recent years, burrowing owls have been driven out of their native habitats. While some developers and even a few outlying scientists try to claim there is simply a population shift, not a decline, there is simply not evidence to support this. The scientific community overwhelmingly reports not just startling shifts in locality, but a significant population decline. Due to overdevelopment, owls are being pushed out and their population diminished, but this does not have to be the case. So there I have my body um, where I've introduced my argument, I've elaborated it, I've addressed the counter argument, and I've summed up my evidence-based conclusion. So what I then went ahead and did is drafted my whole persuasive body. So you'll see I have my introduction up here and my three body paragraphs that follow the same formula. So here I've, I've concluded the first four paragraphs of drafting and I have one more paragraph left before I'm able to revise and move on to editing and publishing. In order to do that, I, we followed three steps. You drafted your argument using text-based support you strengthen your draft, addressing um, the counter argument, and you summed up your paragraph by asserting your evidence-based conclusion. In this lesson, you have drafted the body of a persuasive letter by arguing claims and refuting counterclaims.